Welcome to the third video in CAD Point's residential design series. In this video we'll be looking at giving our project a bit more depth, moving from conceptual design into design development or technical design. We'll look at creating schedules using Revit's bidirectional associativity, swapping out our conceptual objects into our finished components and also show you, you can get high quality visuals for very little if any extra work. To start with we're going to move into our ground floor plan. In this building over here we don't have any room names and what we're going to do here we're going to create a room schedule. So if we move up to the view tab and into schedules, schedules and quantities, I'm going to go move down to room schedule and we'll click OK there. Now what we want to add in here is number name, level, area, and comments. Then we'll move into our sorting and grouping. We're going to select number in the sort by. And if we move into formatting on the area, we're going to tell it to align to the right. And I want to calculate the totals. We'll click OK on that, and you'll see it opens up a new schedule window down here under schedules in your project browser. We come up and add some new rooms in. So what I'm first of all going to do, I'm going to choose our room to be 101. I'm going to name this room Porch. Add in a new room. We'll call this one WC. New room Living Area. New room Kitchen Dining. New room, bedroom, one, bedroom two, bedroom three, ensuite, and bathroom. And as you can see here, the level is not placed and the areas aren't placed. So now if we move into our ground floor plan, back into our home tab, move up to the room command. If we move down here and you see where it says room, we can choose porch and just drag and drop. And you'll notice it's not only adding these tags into these areas here, and it's also adding the areas in, in both square meters and square feet. Move up to the first floor and using the same command, come down, we'll select the bedroom one, bedroom two. As you'll see, we get blue lines there to make sure that they're all lining up. Bedroom three down here, the ensuite, and the bathroom. And what you notice. I haven't added in here the hallway or the stairs, so what I can do, I can just move up to the room. I'm going to create a new room here. I'm just going to call it Hall and Stair. So now if I move back into the room schedule, you'll notice that our rooms all have an area by them, and also that Hall and Stairs has been added in. I would like to show the grand total of my areas. If I can just right click and go to view properties and under sorting and grouping, I can choose to have grand totals. And that'll add in our grand total for the internal areas. Okay, now if I move back into our ground floor plan and I'm going to create our camera view. So from somewhere up here, I think, and I'll look down roughly along there. What we'll do here, we'll just drag this up a bit, taking in our the whole building. Okay, so what you can see here from our previous videos, we created a, a concept house, so not concentrate on materials or finishes. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move into our 3D view. I'm going to turn off the shadows so we can work a little, a little bit quicker. I'm going to select these walls here. I'm just going to swap those out. So at the moment they're a basic concept wall. 
I'm just going to change those to 300 millimeter brick and cavity plasterboard wall. And what I've done there, I've attached materials and hatch patterns to that wall. What I'm also going to do, I'm going to select these windows here. And I'm going to swap those out. For a single window. I'm going to swap these two windows here out. For a triple window. And what we can do here, if we move back into the first floor plan, you can see what effect that has on those there. What we'll do, we'll swap these two out for our quadruple windows. I just want to add one more window in so I can copy that one in there and place it in anywhere along that wall like so. Moving back into our camera view, I'm just going to swap out our double doors, our double concept doors here. I'm just going to show you one little trick here that I find really brings a, a building or a roof to life. So we move into the roof level plan, into the home tab, and under roofs, select fascia. And under fascia, I have the tile overhang put in here. What I want to do here is just tab to select all. Run around the edge there. And Selecting a tile overhang here. A more realistic roof finish to our plan here. And we can have a look at this in a shaded view. If we move back into hidden line view, we can also add shadows on and off. So if we simply come down here and click on the rendering dialog box and we choose to render on high, exterior sun, and just click the rendering box. And a short while later, there we have our finished rendering. So what we're going to do there, we're going to close this down. And we're going to save this to our project. And we'll call it Rendering 1. OK. We'll shut that down there. And you can see in our project browser, under renderings, our rendering shows up in there. And you can export this out to your photo editing software like Photoshop. That brings to an end the third video in CAD Point's residential design series. However, I would like to finish off by saying, given a little bit more time, and really as little bit more time, we can start to bring our rendering to life here by adding in some, some trees and some extra furniture, adding some lights to the inside, and you could come up with something similar to this.